Cole. <laughs> we were supposed to leave like five minutes ago. Three, two, one. Hello, Mississippi. I'm Richard Silas, and I'm your anchor for tonight. Today marks two months since Huckleberry Finn and his pop's disappearance. Investigators say that pop is their prime suspect in a possible murder. Detectives found blood, signs of attempted escape, and a possible murder weapon. If you have any information, please call the number below. Now we go to reporter Kurt Grangerford, who is in the field reporting on two men kayaking down the Mississippi. Kurt? Hello, Dick. I'm down by the docks right now as we lie in wait. Two men have been seen, seen kayaking down the Mississippi. This is extremely dangerous considering the steamboat routes that, they, that go through here. Also, the captains are infamous for their inconsiderate actions towards rafters. They have been known to plow right through their boats and leave them in the water. Oh, I see them. They're in a red kayak. They seem to be making decent speed through. Wait, oh God, I see a ship. Watch out. No! Back to you, Dick. Thank you for keeping us updated, Kurt, but my name is Richard. We've just received a new story that has reports of a steamboat accident about 20 miles south of Cairo. There have been no signs of wreckage or victims. And now on to this week's edition of Book Talk with reporter Cam Phelps. So hello, welcome to Book Club. Today we'll be talking about the controversial new book by Samuel Longhorn Clemens, The Quest of Black Fairy Tale, and I brought before Judge Dasher to help. Oh, hey, thanks for bringing me in. Uh, I just finished it and I'm ready to go. All right, man. So having read the book, I'm sure you noticed the gratuitous amount of racial swearing. Well, what do you think about that? Well, I personally think that it was a real satire of the southern people, slave owners, who deemed themselves above their slaves, while at the same time they were downtrodden scum of the land. Uh, I really enjoyed how Clemens was very symbolic in showing how Iraq, even the main character, was at times sometimes losing every lesson he had learnt within seconds. I thought that watching Blackberry's opinion on black folk change was truly interesting. It showed the virtues of morality and how Clemens views the world. It seems like Clemens is very progressive and liberal, especially for his time. He advocated for his freedom of all people and respect of rights while having, while also having a very dark, sarcastic way of humor, usually resulting in insulting people. <clears throat> Zing! Uh, zing indeed, but for this we have to look at Clemens' most recognizable parody. The Hawfield McCoy feud is very clearly based on Grangfield's and Shepherdson's family battle. It was a section that was written very clearly just for them. I think Clemens wanted to make a statement about the ridiculousness of their feud. That is the fight that has gone for, on for so long and neither of the families can even remember who started I agree, it seemed especially karmic that after Blackberry ditched and found the house of the Hoffields, they ended up losing all of it when James returns. And it's very symbolic of that conflict when the Garfields and the Shepherds clearly, Clemens, believe the idea that you get, you deserve. When Blackberry ditches James, it's always fair that Blackberry gets the chance of an amazing family and torn away from him. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but I mean, it's just you, dude. What do you mean? It's very clear that the entire book is a statement on the mixture of karma and morality, such as when you do good, responsible things, good fortune will be full, and vice versa. I, I think you're going way too deep into this, bruh. Do you have a lift, bruh? Yeah. Four. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sorry to interrupt, but we have an urgent developing story. Apparently the conflict among the Grangerfords and the Shepherdsons has escalated. For this, we go to a reporter in the field. Kurt Grangerford. Kurt? Hi, Dick! The situation is very dangerous right now. We have a small mob of Grangerfords and Shepherdsons out here right now. There have been reports of assault, and it's very, very intense. It's very dangerous. It's been, it's been the best to stay away from West State Street until the situation calms down a bit. Back to you, Dick! Shepherdsons for life! Ah! Thank you, Kurt, but my name is Richard. Also, we have a public announcement for the Missouri-Mississippi area. Keep on the watch for two men and a small boy impersonating spokespeople or tra traveling playsmen. They are conning each town they come across, and they are coming to be known as the Royal Nunsuch. They begin a performance, and then briefly actually perform, and then leave with all of the attendants' money. Once again, if there are any sightings or occurrences, please call the number below. And now, we can return you to Book Talk. <laughs> Uh, uh, hello, and welcome back to Book Talk. We apologize for the interruption. 
Now, due to unfortunate series of events, our guest, Mr. Thatcher, had to leave the studio with security. Now, we're bringing on our new guest, Mr. Sawyer here. Howdy, uh, nice to meet y'all. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, Samuel Longhorn Clemens' new book, The Quest of Blackberry Tail, and the excitement Hey, book. hey, hey, that, that's the one about the Negro and the little boy running away? Right, where we live? Yeah, that's the one anyways. What do you think about the books eating? And uh, I thought it was a very interesting thing. Uh, because on one hand, we see Black Bird end up with two real nice women who go teach him up well. And we see James get lit off the hook on the Count on Miss Holmes. We're going to have to take a quick break from book talk, but thank you, reporter Cam and Mr. Sawyer. But in light of recent events in popular culture, apparently we have three visitors from England in the very hometown of Peter Wilkes today. If you are not up to date on Mr. Wilkes, sadly, the mogul has passed away last evening. One Reverend Harvey Wilkes and his deaf brother William Wilkes, accompanied by their servant Adolphus, have arrived to attend the funeral and to take care of Mr. Wilkes' property. If you're going to be on your way through Arkansas by steamboat, be sure to give them a visit. We also have reports of a runaway slave that's been caught by the name of Jim. If you recognize this man, please call the number below. Let the authorities know who this slave belongs to, and now we can return you to your last segment of Book Talk. Yes, he is actually released from slaverhood by the late Miss Holmes. I think that Bob Chopper was really arrogant, careless, and stupid. He showed no emotion towards James being held captive as a runaway. Then, when, even when having the opportunity to free him, they didn't because they were having too much fun. This, is really, this really shows the deformed conscience of Blackberry and the carelessness of Bob towards important situations. Well, I agree with that in some ways. They may have been real men to James, but they was also having lots of fun. Uh, isn't that what matters in the end? They still sprung him out the joint and saved him in the end. Uh, they may have been gotten caught, but that ain't saying much because James is still left free. Yes, but you must understand that Bob was being mighty irresponsible when he didn't tell nobody about James freedom or, or about even telling Blackberry that <coughs> Miss Holmes had died. Don't you realize that Clemens had specifically written the book that way to show how childish and arrogant Blackberry and Bob were? Uh, nah man, I understand that. Uh, I just saying I think it's an understandable mistake to make. Okay, whatever. So, what do you think about the ending of the book? That was pretty lame. Uh, how do you mean? Well, Bob just up and give James 40 bucks and then we don't hear nothing about him getting in no trouble. Then we hear about that Blackberry is getting taken away and sent to the lady who gonna teach him up well. Well, which that ain't good, but it kind of anticlimactic. Anticlimactic? Yeah, whatever. Well, that's good view. I guess the action just dropped off significantly and to no replace. It was very sharp change of the tone from acting like escape scene to caught and everyone just peachy. I believe there's a hidden message though. <clears throat> really? What's the message? What's it says? No, no, like the theme of the story. Oh, uh, what's the theme? What's it says? It makes a statement about southern civilization at the time because Blackberry is in it the open world and seeing what humanity is like, first with his pop, then with Hatfields and McCloys, next to the Lord, count, cunning the towns, and lastly with their own treatment of James, the whole book is one big view of the world through Clemens' eyes. It believes that the world is a very evil place through wretched things. <clears throat> I don't think the world is that bad, but uh, if you say so. Well, careful professional review and analysis, we could score this book an F- minus because it is makes the southern people look like idiots and that's just downright disrespectful, you hear me? But the producers told me that I have to read the northerners views. So the northerners gave this book a B plus because it is a slow narrative and so rarely did you find yourself laughing at the comical parts. But nonetheless, it is, has great characters, great dramatic set of characters and very powerful theme that can be interpreted in multiple ways. Well, that concludes this edition of the Book Talk. I'm reporter Cam Phillips. Back to you, Richard. As you can tell, it's been a very busy day in the news. 
Thank you for watching. I'm Richard Silas, and that's the way it is. <laughs>